Hello again from my front porch. See that little throw it. Let's do this hand. This hand. See, like like keep things hopping. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I wanted to, today I want to chat about customer service, exceptional customer service, super customer service, you might even say. Uh, now, now uh, in the past, I have worked in sales roles myself. Uh, I have also taught customer service skills to others in, in various training roles for different employers at different times, but Customer service skill is something that is always forefront on my mind because whether I'm in a sales role or not, whether I'm in a direct uh, external customer facing role, like I've worked in retail in, in the past and several times actually different places, whether you're in that kind of a role or like I am now where you are supporting internal customers, other parts of the company, customer service is still a factor of that. and let's not miss the fact that I am a customer, as are you. Uh, lots of different places, different writing. And we all have our experiences with customer service. And what does that look like? Now, increasingly, we live in, a, in, a, in an era in which there are those, especially in the service industries, who um, get taken advantage of, uh, sadly, by unscrupulous employers who want to pay them as little as they possibly can get away with paying them, not not as little as they can, not as little as they deserve, but as little as they can get away with paying. Uh, and then they try to add on their things like, you know, for waiters, waitresses, and bartenders and stuff, you know, well, you know, you make it up in tips. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, huh? I, I remember when I was selling photocopiers for a miserable eight months of my life, that I was told, we pay you this base salary, but you really make your money in commissions. Well, commissions were great, as long as you were able to sell the, the product with a, with, at a profit. The, the bigger the margin of profit, you know, so here's the cost of the product, and you sell it for this amount here, that difference is the profit. Your commission was a percentage of that profit. So of course, there's a motivation to want to sell it for as much as possible but it's a very competitive business and people don't see the value of paying big money for something. They want to know how cheap can I get something. And so more often than not, you're wheeling and dealing, low, low them with, with pricing just so they can buy the product and you can check off you made a sale and in the process almost have to give away the entire profit part of it. Part of it. And so then there's very little commission. Uh, and, and that really stinks. You work really hard to do something and then you don't make that extra that you were told was part of what you would be making. Uh, but, well, that's up to you. That's not our fault. <laughs> Same thing applies in a lot of service industry things. But, but I digress. As You know, I should change the name of this show. <laughs> Instead of, I'll open my front porch, it ought to be called, but I digress, because <laughs> I do seem to do that a lot. But anyway, I digress again. <laughs> but in this particular case, customer service, there, there, there are uh, uh, just no end of examples that we could talk about of really bad customer service, where you have these individuals who, who you may, may want to get paid more, they may feel like they deserve more, and yet they're doing the bare minimum possible, only what is required of them. And, you know, it's not always, it's not always because they're bad people, it's that, you know, they're not being treated very well, and so why should they put in the effort for something that they're not going to get compensated for? You know, I, I, so I, I, I get it, I understand that. But it is that reality then that the customer service itself suffers. You know, it, it's that disconnect that, 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 that the worker wants to be paid more for the work they're doing, but they have the disconnect of not understanding the reason they're there working is because of the customer. Uh, and so, you know, there, there is a direct correlation here, but that often gets, gets lost in, in, in the shuffle when we're talking about, oh, well, we've got to have, uh, you know, I need more money for this and that. That's a legitimate need for things, but it's like, okay, yeah, but remember why you're here, why you're working. So I'm not here to criticize about that. In fact, what I am here to do is to really spotlight two examples of incredible, awesome, customer service that I've encountered over the last few months here. 
Uh, now, I know on one hand, it's kind of sad that I've only got two really great examples over the last few months, but I do have these examples and I want to spotlight them. One of them is uh, from uh, an American airline flight that I had a few months ago. A uh, lady's name, Gina. Now, I, I was flying, I, you know, I fly American enough that uh, more often than not, uh, my my seat gets upgraded and I get to fly first class. Yay, good good for Paul. Uh, but in this particular flight, uh, Gina was one of the flight attendants on the flight and she was the one primarily focused on supporting the first class cabin area. And when I got on the plane, there was a card laying in my seat with my name on it. I picked it up, I sat down, put my belt on, I was like, oh, I opened the card up and there's this handwritten note inside that, you know, said, hey, you know, we're glad you're flying with us. Welcome aboard. And if there's anything we can do to help you. And it's signed by Gina and the other flight attendant. Now, I'm, it's not that I'm discard, dismissing the other flight attendant, but I'm focusing on Gina because, because in talking then with Gina uh, during the course of the flight, I discovered that this is something that she just does on her own. This is something that she decided to just start doing uh, on her own. And then her mom got into it because Gina was buying thank you cards and writing this stuff on there. And her mom, who uh, was at home and, and was, likes doing crafts, but you know wasn't working, uh, said, how about I help you with that? And so now her mom hand makes these cards that Gina uses to write the notes in that, that, that get put in the seats. And, and so that means, in, and remember again, it's personalized. These cards are personalized, the envelope and the card, which mean, and, and they're laid in your specific seat, which means after doing all the stuff she has to do to get ready to, and there's a list of stuff that every one of these flight attendants have to take care of. After taking care of that list of stuff, she is going through the passenger list and she is at that time customizing these, personalizing these, and then confirming seats, confirming names, and putting, I mean, she's making it a very personal experience. Now understand, I'm not, and, and now, during the flight, she was excellent. She did a good job supporting me. I've been on plenty of other flights where the flight attendants uh, are excellent as well. Not even just the first class areas, but you know, the flight in general. Um, uh, first class, of course, it's a smaller group. So, you know, the flight attendant tends to be able to focus a bit more on those people, but uh, but so I've been on other flights, but but other flights don't stand out. That one stood out because of this over and above that Gina did, the, the, this this exceptional customer service that she offered uh, was was really remarkable because in that simple act of of personalizing those cards and having them on our seats before we even boarded, she was saying, I am taking you seriously as an individual customer that I am here to serve. Now, I thought that was really, really remarkable. And everybody else in that first class section, that they were like, what, what is it? Because that doesn't happen on every flight. In fact, it has never happened on any other flight that I've been on with any airline at any time. So again, it stands out, very remarkable. Uh, I hope American Airlines treats Gina awesome uh, because she, she totally deserves it. She is an awesome lady, fantastic smile, and it was my pleasure to get to meet her on that flight because she just was really inspiring uh, uh, that, that she has such a heart for wanting to make a good experience for the customer she's there to serve on that plane. So, so that, that, that's a great example. Another example is a much more close to home and down to earth one the, the, in, at Culver's Restaurant in, in my hometown of Carroll where my parents like to go all the time. My dad is often a creature of habit. Now he will occasionally order something different but there is one specific order, one combination of order that he tends to order more often than anything else when he goes to Culver's. Now, sometimes 
he doesn't enunciate clearly, and he, he, he has hearing issues. This year especially, he can't hear real well, well out of. And, and, and sometimes the, the, the workers behind the register, they don't speak up and they don't enunciate clear enough, especially the younger ones. They're kind of timid and, you know, they don't want to be coming off like they're yelling at somebody. And so, you know, so, so they, they would have these struggles where, where they would have trouble with my dad had trouble hearing them. Uh, you know, they're asking, do you, now, what do you want for your sides? What? You, what? what? I, you know, and so this back and forth. Well, there's this manager there named Jessica. And Jessica is a superstar of customer service. And I don't say that lightly. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke. Jessica, after observing this happening on more than one occasion with my dad, Jessica proceeded to, on her own, without talking to my dad at all, proceeded to make him a little wallet sized card that she printed out. She wrote out the exact order that he wants, his sandwich, what he wants on it, what he wants for his side, what he wants to drink, wrote this out, typed it out on a card and laminated this piece of paper and then gave it to my dad so that he could carry it in his wallet. And when he comes into Culver's now, assuming that's what he wants, which again, 90% of the time, <laughs> that's what he wants. All he has to do is pull this card out of his wallet and he just shows it to the worker behind the, count, the register and there's no confusion. He gets exactly what he wants. Now, uh, could he have made this card on his own? Absolutely, he could have done that. Did he? No. <laughs> uh, and, and does Jessica necessarily do that for everybody? I don't know. I've, I haven't asked her if she does it for other people. But my point that I've observed is that, I mean, there's no connection. It's not like Jessica is a friend of our family or related in any way. She just is a really, and I'll tell you what, I have been there at Culver's and Carol many times with my parents, and uh, it, it's hard sometimes confirming where Jessica's at, if, if, assuming she's there working, because she could literally be anywhere and everywhere. She, oh, Jessica's back working in the kitchen. Next thing you know, you're looking out the window and you're seeing her delivering meals out to people waiting in line out there, or or you glance over and oh, she's at the she's at the register taking somebody's order, or she's over there sweeping up a mess. If I, she's just like boom, 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 boom. She is she is the epitome of what a good uh, food service manager needs to be. She's constantly on the watch for what needs done to make the experience best for the customer. And, and again, she made these car, this card for my dad. My dad carries it religiously in his wallet and, uh, and uh, he, he gets use out of it and it has made his experience going so much. I probably has made the experience of the kid behind the <laughs> register too. Probably made their experience better with him. <laughs> but, but these are both examples of where you have someone, one individual who takes it on themselves to do something that is totally unscripted. This is not in the manual. That there Nowhere does it say, yeah, do this for the customer and they'll feel this way. No, there's nothing like that. It, it, is, not, it is not planned. It is not requested. It is not in, uh, uh, anything that the company tells them they have to do. It is something they've taken on themselves to do on, for, for a customer or for customers to enhance that experience. And I just think that is so extraordinary uh, because again, we live in a, in a time frame where that is becoming a lost art. I'm not even gonna call it a skill, it's an art because these are the people, and, and, and you know, I, I go to restaurants and stuff where you have a server that comes to the table and, and they interact at a, at, a, at a level that is different than the average server. They start engaging, they start interacting, they start telling stories, they'll laugh at my jokes. Uh, <laughs> and Lisa will be the first to tell you that sometimes takes a lot. <laughs> but, but these are the kind of people who, who are there not just to make the money. Now the server at the table may be angling for a bigger tip, sure. But the point is these are individuals who understand that the success of them in that job is how much they are able to make the customer experience be the best that it can be. And that is the heart of customer service. Customer service is how good is the experience for the individual? How good of an experience does the customer have because of what you have done for them? 
If the customer can have the same experience uh, with or without you, then you've contributed nothing. <laughs> uh, if the customer walks out saying, well, the food was good or the whatever product was good, but man, that person that was waiting on us or serving us, they didn't seem to know what they're doing, then your service was not good. But when you can do something like fly in an airplane or go to a Culver's or where, and, and, and it's, not, it's not what you did, the, you, you flew on a plane, uh, you, you got a meal, that, that's not the memorable part, but it is the way you were treated. It's that extra little thing that you did for the person that you were serving for the customer, that's when you've done extraordinary customer service. So I just think these are great stories, definitely worth retelling and sharing. And so it's my show, I get to do that. <laughs> so with that, I'm gonna let you all go and I will see you next time from my front porch. <laughs>